from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Ashley Nirpovig in Helena, and almost 100 people spoke in opposition of a new emergency rule that prevents transgender Montanans from changing the sex on their birth certificate. Happy Friday, Southwest Montana. Sun shining in the uh, mining city, sun shining elsewhere it as looks well. Looks beautiful. Yeah. First yeah. day of July. And couldn't really ask for much more than uh, we're getting. It's going to be warmer today than it was yesterday, but we're not talking extreme heat. I, we're talking temperatures into the 80s with a very isolated chance of some mountain showers. Nice. That's a very typical pattern here yeah. in southwest Montana. Yeah. Uh, looking at our uh, future cast, again, it's a very isolated chance of some thunder showers developing in the late afternoon, early evening for the mountains. Shouldn't really big, be a big issue for anybody else. Even that, it isn't a big issue. Daytime high is right around that 80 degree mark for most of the area. We do have kind of a stormy setup for the weekend. We'll talk about the potential seeing some thunder showers coming up in just a few minutes. All right, uh, thank you, Matt. To 632 now. During a public hearing uh, yesterday, almost 100 Montanans said they opposed a state health department rule that prevents transgender people from changing the sex on their Montana birth certificates. Dan's Ashley Nurbevig was there and has the story. The new proposed rule mirrors a temporary emergency rule the Montana State Department of Public Health and Human Services issued in May, which said DPHHS would not amend the sex marker in a birth certificate based on gender transition, gender identity, or change of gender. The emergency rule will expire in September, and the almost three-hour-long public hearing was a required step under the DPHHS normal rulemaking process. In an emailed response, DPHHS spokesperson John Ebelt said the health department will decide what action to take with respect to the proposed rule after close of the public comment period and review of the comments. Two people spoke in support of the rule during the hearing. More than 90 spoke in opposition. Those who opposed the rule included transgender Montanans, as well as parents, legislators, teachers, friends, and doctors of transgender Montanans. Gwen Nicholson said the rule change halted them as they were in the process of changing their name and gender. I feel that my civil rights have already been unduly limited and that the risk of discrimination and physical harm that I face in my life has been elevated. Zoe Barnard, former administrator of DPHHS Addictive and Mental Disorders Division, said she fears for a transgender youth and her family. But I find myself thinking as they age into adulthood that they might be safer outside of this state. I grew up in Wyoming. My best friend's sister was good friends with Maddie Shepard and I worry about the way that this is going. Matthew Shepard was a young gay man who was beaten and left to die in 1998 in Wyoming. His death sparked a national outcry for LGBTQ plus equality. University of Montana professor Annie Belcourt said that as a parent of a trans child, the latest moves by the state have been devastating for her family. And for my child to see our state actively try to attack my child and my child's rights through what I see really as state-sponsored hate. Magdalene Marmon, a Missoula middle school teacher, said she's watched the faces of her transgender students when they are handed a report card with the incorrect name and gender. I have seen that look of hurt. It's like a little gut punch to a child. It's a small gut punch. They can take it once or twice. How many times per year are we going to give, ask them to take that gut punch? She asked the state to not force those students to take those punches because she's also seen what happens when a student is identified by their correct name and gender. I have seen the light in their eyes when they find that moment of recognition, when they realize they have been seen. Ryan Kellen Jean from Florence was in the last two dozen or so to speak. Jean identified as transgender and he gave a blunt comment about the potential outcome if DPHHS was to adopt the rule. I want DPHHS and this administration to understand that by limiting the rights of trans, non-binary, and two-spirit Montanans, people will die. People can still submit comment on the new proposed rule until 5 p.m. on July 8th. In Helena, Ashley Nerbovig, MTN News. And staying in Helena for just a little bit, the leader of one of Montana's largest state agencies stepping down later this summer. Governor Greg Gianforte announced in a statement yesterday morning that Adam Meyer, director of the Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services, will leave his role on August 12th, citing a, quote, ongoing family health issue, end quote. DPHHS says Meyer has been taking leave time over the last several months to support his family. Meyer will be replaced by Charlie Brereton, who is currently the DPHHS Chief of Staff and Healthcare Policy Advisor for Governor Gianforte. 
636 now the last time you got together with some friends were any of them from a different generation experts who study human connection say intergenerational relationships are more important than ever elizabeth ruiz looked into what researchers say are clear benefits for the young and the old when people born decades apart spend quality time together because okay. we're looking at light sources today Phyllis Rosendahl has loved painting ever since she was young. But it's a lot easier than oils. But in the thick of the pandemic, she says her isolation and loneliness made it hard to pick up a paintbrush. I couldn't because I just, I was bordering on being depressed, which I'm sure a lot of people were. Now she's part of a program at her assisted living facility called Portrait Pals, facilitated by the Kindness Empire, a business with a mission to nurture human connection so people feel inspired to be kind to themselves and others. The Kindness Empire is a national platform offering programs that connect people from very different communities. Portrait Pals connects seniors with children. They spend four weeks painting a portrait of each other. The kids are now on summer break, but I got to speak with Phyllis about the experience. Sage was her name, and she just looked very outgoing. She looks like she could do anything in the world. She says she felt a strong connection to Sage, and her interaction gave her a sense of purpose and encouragement. It's the younger generation that keeps me alive and that keeps me active. How do we link the generations in valuable and productive ways so that the energy of young people and the accumulated life wisdom of older people can complement one another and come together and meet each other's needs? Can you put this right in there? Carl Pillemer is a human development professor at Cornell University. He researches the importance of intergenerational connections. For the first time in history, most young people have almost no contact with older people outside of intermittent connections in their own family. So our society is dramatically age segregated. And that's why folks like us are trying to develop programs that help to bring old and young together in more meaningful ways. Let's see. Carl helped start the Cornell Crisis Advice Project, an online space that offers elder wisdom for challenging times. There are people still alive today whose families were affected by the 1918 pandemic and have memories of the aftermath of that. Getting that experience transferred gives younger people a kind of living perspective that they would never otherwise get. Carl says interaction between different generations can clear up false stereotypes, encourage critical thinking, and help young people prepare for their own aging. A key piece of advice older people have for getting through a crisis like the pandemic is to be generous. People who got through it well and who came through very severe problems in their childhood or youth remember generosity. So people in the Great Depression remember people sharing what little they had with other people. Through the Portrait Pals program, the seniors and kids were able to share their time, talent, and love, realizing they had more in common than they originally thought. We all have the same concerns. We all want to be heard. We want to be perceived as being strong. After all, age is just a number. You know, we're all young at heart and we're just stuck in old bodies. I'm Elizabeth Ruiz reporting.